If you are worried you have Lyme disease or just like the outdoors and want the peace of mind of knowing whether you have Lyme disease or not, there is a new Lyme screening test based on decades of research by Dr. Richard Marconi, a professor at VCU Medical Center. For more information, visit glymedx.com. That's G-L-Y-M-E-D-X.com. Or email at info at glymedx.com. Infectious diseases. Research. Medicine. Health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Yeah, that takes you back. All right. Well, my next guest reminded us last week in a Kansas State University news release that bed bugs are still out there despite the absence of news reports. Uh, joining me on the show now is Sarah Zukoff, Ph.D. Uh, she is a assistant professor of entomology at the Kansas State University Research and Extension Center. Hi, Dr. Zukoff, and welcome to the program. Hello. I'm glad to have you. Um, so... Looking at the release, what prompted you to put that out? Was it just a reminder for the public? Yes, it was a reminder for the public, um, but uh, it was interesting because um, this has been in the news kind of off and on for several years, but lately I've been getting quite a few calls uh, with folks who are having more and more run-ins with bed bugs, and so um, this this kind of prompted me to just remind people that they are still out there and... and um, kind of get them thinking about it. Sure. And it's actually very, very timely for us here in Tampa Bay because they just had quite a bed bug infestation at one of the retirement homes here. And that was, you know, in all the newspapers. So, Mm -hmm. okay, well, let's go over some of the basics about bed bugs. Um, What are they? Um, Well, bed bugs are insects. Uh, They do have six legs. Um, They're members of the order of true bugs, which are called hemipterans. Um, and they're in the family Semicidae. Um, and so there's only a few species that really, um, you know, attack humans, and that would be bat bugs and actual bed bugs. Um, the adults are kind of tannish, reddish brown. Uh, they're very, very flat, and they have oval bodies. And if you're just looking at them kind of with the naked eye, they look like they don't have wings, um, but really they have just small, very underdeveloped wings. And they're about as thin as a piece of paper when they haven't fed. So they are just really tiny and hard to see, and it takes um, a little bit of looking to find them sometimes. <laughs> right. And, and where are they found? Um, well, they were actually introduced from Europe by early colonists. Um, so they've been around for a very long time. <laughs> um, there's one joke that said they've been following us from the cave to the <laughs> to the home. <laughs> um, but wor- bed bugs are really just worldwide, unfortunately, right now in distribution. Um, they can really occur in the home anywhere where people sleep or in hotels or whatever. Um, and they're usually found in about, you know, eight feet space or zone around where those people will sleep. But they can be found anywhere in the home. Yeah, in, in a real twist of irony, uh, in the news release, you mentioned a story about uh, a bed bug infestation at an entomology meeting. Um, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, um, and actually it's happened to me twice since the, I let the story out, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we were actually at a national entomology meeting in California, and um, I, I actually was was not looking uh, when I first got there because I had to talk as soon as I first got to my hotel. Um, but a friend of mine said, oh, I found bed bugs. You better go look. And sure enough, I went back and we found them. And several of my um, colleagues found them as well. And so it was kind of funny um, just being at an entomology meeting <laughs> sure. with thousands of entomologists and we found bed bugs. <laughs> okay. Well, here on, our, on this show, you know, our, our, the main focus is, of, of course, is infectious diseases. So, and probably the one of the most important things people want to know is, do bed bugs spread disease? Yeah, that's a question I get all the time. 
Um, so bed bugs, they have been found to naturally be infected with lots of bloodborne pathogens, um, but they're just not very effective vectors of the disease. So they just don't transmit these vectors or these um, bloodborne pathogens well at all. And so there's really no diseases um, that have been found to be passed to humans other than the new discovery of Chagas disease. Um, and so they recently found in the uh, University of Pennsylvania, I right. believe it was, yes. um, that has, they've actually found that chagas can be transmitted between mice from bed bugs. So usually the uh, kissing bug does that, right. but now they found bed bugs can do it. But there's no evidence or no, no I guess, um, observation of a direct human bed bug uh, transmission of chagas at this point. Now, the, going back to the uh, University of Pennsylvania study, uh, where they say the bed bugs have the ability to acquire and transmit the trypanosoma parasite that causes chagas. Mm-hmm. Do you as an entomologist, um, do you have any thoughts or concerns about that finding? Um, it is very concerning. Um, chagas, thankfully, is not a disease that's very prevalent all over the U.S. Um, it's, you know, it pops up here and there, and it's mostly in the south. Um, but if, if bed bugs start carrying this disease and, and, you know, are starting to be transported, you know, like they are across different hotels and between houses, um, the disease could spread much faster. Sure. Um, and so that is an issue. And right. I'm really happy they discovered this, and, and I hope, um, you know, they uh, get lots of funding to do more research on this very soon because it's an important aspect. Oh, yeah, and they're so ubiquitous. It, it, it would be a disaster if uh, they really started transmitting infectious diseases. Mm-hmm. It would. Um, now, bed bugs are an ectoparasite. So if they don't transmit infections, do they cause any kind of health issues in people? They can. Um, their primary uh, medical importance is just the inflammation that they cause with their bites. Um, some people may experience sleeplessness due to itching or just paranoia of no- knowing you have bed bugs around you if you have an infestation. Um, some people may develop allergic reactions as well, but generally um, this is about the extent of, of what will happen to people. To people. Sure. Now, i I go on a vacation with my family. We stay at some hotels. How would I know if if I've been bitten by a bed bug? Well, it's kind of hard to tell um, depending on how your body reacts to the bites. So if you just come up with a couple of itchy red bumps, you know, um, it could be an infection. It could be um, bites from other insects, mosquitoes and whatnot. And and they do look kind of similar to mosquito bites. But it just depends on your body's reaction. Um, Some people actually have no visible signs of being bitten at all after they've been bitten. Um, And so... The, the best way to see if you have bed bugs um, or to know you've been bitten is to, you know, have any visible signs, but also look on your bed. So look in the bed sheets and see if you're seeing any rust-colored specks showing up, which would be the defecation of those, um, the uh, bed bugs, which, you know, they're, they're defecating blood cells. And so that, sure. you know, that'll show up as rust-colored spots on the sheets. Um, and if you and see any signs at all of bed bugs, then you can kind of narrow it down to say it's a bed bug and it wasn't some mosquito biter or something like that. Right. And that really segues into my next question, which probably a lot of people are interested in, is um, you're at your house. What are the uh, signs and symptoms of having an infestation at your home? And, and how did they possibly get there? Um, so... Looking for bed bugs is pretty easy. Um, if it's kind of in the earlier stage, then it gets a little more tough um, because if you only have a few there, then they're, you know, it's going to be like a needle in the haystack. Um, as they progress and, you know, there's more and more of them, it's easier and easier to find. Right. <laughs> um, so people really need to look for shed skins, um, which kind of look like empty little shells of bed bugs um, that will be scattered, through, you know, around the bed skirts or um, on the mattresses or behind the wallboard. Um, and they'll look for, of course, the live bed bugs, those rust-colored spots um, from the defecation of those bed bugs on the bed sheets, that's a good sign. Um, if you have uh, any cracks and crevices um, in the bed, bed skirts and bed springs, that's kind of an important thing, and behind headboards is really where they like to congregate. Um, and so that's kind of where you'd look. And it's kind of interesting because bed bugs, they start to become active around midnight, um, and then they are kind of active until about 5 a.m., hmm. and so um, they're kind of out and roaming around at that point. And, and, and so we're on vacation in Disney World, and we come home. All of a sudden, I have bed bugs. Is it because of I, my luggage? 
It could have possibly been. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of times the bed bugs, um, they won't always be concentrated on the bed. They'll be kind of dispersed other places in the room sometimes. Um, and they, within a few feet of a blood mill, like a human, <laughs> right. um, they can smell and detect that human. Uh, but if they're kind of farther away from that, and you know, across the room in the closet, then they'll just kind of wander around for a little bit. Um, and that's kind of how they end up in, in people's bags. And, or if people put their luggage on the, on the bed, like so many people do, sure. um, they end up that way in there as well. Okay. And uh, another uh, my final question and another important question that a lot of people are interested in. And then, in fact, I got these two questions from my infectious disease news Facebook page. And, and the two people said um, basically the same question with a little bit of difference. It's uh, is there an effective way to rid your house of bed bugs? And then the second question was, is there any effective natural way to do that? Um, so, yeah, very good question. Yeah. <laughs> um, bed bug populations actually can double every 16 days under, like, perfect circumstances. Um, so catching them sooner rather than later will help making control of them, you know, much easier. Um, so if you if you have an infestation um, and you want to get rid of it, um, it takes a lot of effort and time, and it means cleaning a lot. <laughs> right. Um, it, it really would be um, kind of an IPM approach, an integrated pest management approach, so you're not just throwing pesticides at it, but you're, you're doing a lot of cleaning and, and, and uh, kind of trying to get rid of those before you bring in insecticides and whatnot. Um, so getting rid of all of the clutter, especially around the bedroom, is really important. Um, moving anything that can hide, be, uh, you know, behind such as posters or paintings on the wall or area rugs, anything like that, move out of the um, bedroom and out of the area where they're infected. Um, the vacuum is a very effective tool if you use that, that brush tool that comes with the vacuum usually. Mm -hmm. um, they're very good at picking up, you know, the skins, live and dead bed bugs. Um, and so that's a, a kind of the bed bug infestation tool that I most recommend. Okay. <laughs> um, it, they won't pick up the eggs, however, because they're usually glued to the mattress or other things. Um, so you'll have to keep at it. Every time eggs hatch, you'll have to you know, kind of vacuum them up. All right. Well, very good. I want to thank you, uh, Dr. Zara, Sarah Zukoff, for your uh, time and expertise, ma'am. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it.